The glare. I discovered my wife fell in love with another man and began sleeping with him. We've been married 15 years and have three kids. She confessed to the affair and wants a divorce. She tells me she's had regrets for 15 years and finally had enough. This blindsided me as she never talked about having those feelings before. I thought we had a stable healthy relationship. We never fought, we communicated well. How am I supposed to process this? I still love her. Kids still love her. I'm struggling with the fact that she is willing to hurt us this much for her own happiness. Is it selfishness? She also destroyed the marriage of the other man. We live in a small community. We have to see each other constantly, and constantly reminded of the hurt she's causing. It feels like she just expects me to be okay with all of it and just move on. I can barely function. She was my rock. She has a new one now and I'm alone. I don't want to destroy the mother of my children, despite her actions. She still loves the kids. She said she fell in love with him about a year ago and only recently became physically intimate. Unfortunately, I lost it when I found out. I told her to make a decision and she chose to leave. I told her she could tell the kids or I could. She told them, in a PG way. Even told them with who. Hindsight, that was the wrong path but nothing I can do about it now. I struggle with how I can. My comment, reading stories like yours for years on this channel like this, there's no magic bullet she's gone. Sorry man. Your mind can go 100 miles a minute thinking, reanalyzing it all, scheming, won't do any good. She's told you the marriage is over. The best you can do is believe her, and, act decisively to move on. She's a very selfish, cruel woman right now who has hurt you and will hurt you further for own selfish needs. Act decisively and hand her separation, divorce papers. All that scheming you're doing on how to get her back, stop it and spend all that mental energy on becoming a single man, a single father. You're going to end up there eventually, you'll respect yourself a hell of a lot more if you avoid the pick me dance, face reality head on, and move on. Get her out of her life as much as you can. Don't do another goddamn thing for her, fix her car, her computer, pick up something for her at the store. Nope that's what a husband does, she fired you from that job. That's her boyfriend's job now. You've got all you can handle on your plate sorting out your new life. Figuring out who's living where, do you sell the house, child custody, babysitting, etc. Lean on your friends and family, now's the time in your life for them step up and help you. If you have any energy left, start working on a new you, exercise to burn off anger and help you sleep better and to look better. I can't say this enough. Moping and wishing and being a nice guy aren't going to fix this. Act decisively and sever ties except for talking about the kids. Ask her to move out, because you can't stand the sight of her any longer. Her boyfriend can have her, good luck to them, they're going to need it. Your wife's a selfish liar and cheater, time to knock her off the pedestal you have her on in your mind. Story 2. I am 47, my wife is 41. We have 5 children, ages 16 down to 4. Married since 1998. I don't want to type everything out, so I'll just provide the high, low, lights. In July of 15, my wife received an email from a male friend that she has known since childhood. They never dated, but perhaps had feelings of some degree at some time in the past. They had, to my knowledge, kept in contact after we got married, but it was only sporadic, two or three times a year, and never anything to be concerned about. In this particular email, he expressed desire for her. He is in the Coast Guard, and regularly was at sea away from his own wife and kids, too. He lives and works in VA, we live in New England. That email started a back and forth string of emails that led to him telling my wife in September that they would have to be very careful to keep their respective spouses in the dark about what was going on. My wife responded with something very close to don't worry about OP, he isn't like that, being jealous. He wouldn't suspect a thing because he trusts me. Two years ago, I had a heart attack. Their emails were still going strong at that time, and I had no idea what was happening between the two of them. By December, she was starting to share songs with him, the first being Photograph. When I found the emails and the song, I listened to it and was devastated. Crushed. Absolutely ripped apart. More on that later. Also in December, he had them switch their communication from emails to words with friends, a Scrabble type of app game on their cell phones. There, they could message each other within the app and it would never show up in emails or on our cell phone bills. They played each other all the time, I did not know this until summer of 16, and of course messaged each other all the time through the app, too. At some point in the winter, they switched to a messaging app on their phones where they could share pictures. In February, my wife mentioned going to NJ and SC to see her family. None of them live around us anymore. They all moved away. I told her she should go and that we'd buy her the plane tickets. No, she said, I want to drive. At that instant, I thought it was curious that she'd say that, and I wondered about her Coast Guard buddy in VA, but didn't think too deeply on it and let it go. By springtime, I was going to bed nearly every night alone and she'd come to bed hours after me. She also was being very guarded with her phone. It's amazing that it never dawned on me what was going on. She always had her phone on her person, and if I walked nearby, she'd either subtly turn it so I couldn't see what was on it, or she'd simply turn it off instantly. I can't believe I didn't catch on. I guess I that's the nature of trust, isn't it? 
Anyway, by early July, she was preparing for her trip, which originally was to be seven days, then she asked for eight, and then ten. The night before she was to leave, I asked her if we were okay and if there was something wrong. She said we were okay and that we were experiencing just normal married things, nothing big. The day she left, my mother told me that my wife previously mentioned to her that she wanted to see some friends while away. My wife never said a word to me. My mother also told me these exact words, you better start paying more attention to your wife, because she's having an affair. I was floored. I couldn't believe it. I was even miffed at my mother for saying such a thing. I had a feeling that something wasn't right for a while now, but I could never put my finger on it, so I didn't dwell on it. Anyway, aside from texting me to tell me she had arrived in NJ, I didn't hear from her for two days. When we did finally speak, I asked her if she was going to drive straight through to SC. The phone went silent. I was hoping to stop and see on the way. At that, I sort of unloaded on her, but not in a mean way. I told her she was obviously planning on seeing him right from the start when she planned the trip six months ago, and that she never bothered to tell me. I was pretty miffed. I told her she might as well, because no matter what I said was going to change anything. I was angry, so she stopped to see him at his workplace, somewhere in VA, and it was somehow Coast Guard related, and then continued on to SC to see other family members. While she was in SC, we talked at length about things, and it was pretty raw. Even though I was angry about her secret plans, I still didn't think anything like an affair was going on. I just couldn't wrap my mind around it. Even so, I suspected I was losing her to a degree, or more, and I was breaking down. I was bawling my eyes out while alone back home, realizing that something was happening with my wife that wasn't good and it was breaking me. After a few days of late-night phone calls that lasted for hours, we seemed to patch things up and there was an uneasy calm for the remainder of her trip. When she got home, we had a magical night together, where we both committed to working harder on our marriage. I made drastic changes. I was helping her more around the house, leaving her love notes here and there. We were going out on dates. We started a family prayer time every night. On the surface, things were going much, much better. She appeared to be much happier, too. However, she was still on her phone a lot. She was still guarding her phone, but not as diligently. I gave her the password to my phone, saying no part of my life should ever be off limits to her in order to make her more amenable to giving me her password. She reluctantly gave it to me. This provided an opportunity to look through her phone, it is in my name and I pay the bill, to see exactly what was going on with it. On night of September 9th, I found the emails I referenced earlier. I also saw the song. I also could tell she was sending pics to him last fall, but the pics weren't viewable. Clearly, they had established a covert relationship that was way over the line. She was cheating on me. That morning, the 10th, while we were outside on lawn chairs with coffee, I brought out my laptop and told her I wanted to show her something. I went to YouTube and started playing photograph, and just looked at her. She started tearing up, and I said these words to her, that's a beautiful song to share with someone you love. At that, I implored her to tell me what was going on, and all she could muster was a plea to let the past stay in the past. After some conversation, I let it go. The next day, I attended a September 11th remembrance ceremony, and when I got home, I brought her outside again and asked her again what was going on, what she did. I told her I saw a lot on her phone, but I needed her to tell me with her own mouth. I needed her to come clean. She finally told me. There were elements of everything. They confided everything with each other. They sent dirty pics back and forth. They dirty texted. They told each other they loved each other, that they had codes for a bunch of stuff, the works. She denied they ever had slept together, however. She still denies it. I told her she needed to contact him that day in my presence and tell him they were never to contact each other again. She did that. So, D-Day was September. We've been working on our marriage since. There's quite a bit to say about our reconciliation, but I'm wiped out from all this typing and reliving it again, so perhaps I will save it for later. I saw some of the pics she sent him, and yes, they are quite graphic and hurtful. Aside from the pics, the only other things I've seen are the emails from last fall. While I know the messages from WWF and the other app would be far, far more damaging to see, I sort of wish I could see all that, but I don't know if it's possible. I wish it was. I want to see exactly what was said. Maybe it would destroy me again, given that we appear to be on better footing now and making progress. But I still want to know exactly what transpired. While I saw some pics, I wish I could retrieve all the pics from the phone. I don't know why, but I want to see them. I'm not a techie, so I'm not sure how to go about that or even if it's possible. Anyway, I have cried so many tears in the aftermath of D-Day, it isn't funny. Her cheating and deceit utterly broke me. Three months post D-Day, I believe we are doing better, but I don't know if I will ever forget this betrayal. I never thought my wife would do this. Here is where I am right now. Aware as I had no trust in my wife for the first month or two after D-Day on September 11th, I now have some trust. I guess you could say my default setting isn't unbelief anymore. It's somewhere between not believing her and completely believing her. B my good days are getting almost normal and they are increasing in number and frequency. The bad days aren't quite as bad as the first couple of months after D-Day. See my thirst for every detail isn't as strong as it was. 
I still wonder about a few things, such as whether or not it got physical in any way, or exactly badly she misrepresented me to her affair partner. He, my desire to know the wise is also starting to wane. I guess you could say I am less concerned about the affair now and more concerned about what she's doing currently, if what I'm seeing from her is real and genuine, and not just a front like her life during the affair. I really want to monitor her phone for a while to confirm whether or not she's being completely honest about her actions now. Yeah, I still cry from time to time now, but it's only about once a week or so. I trusted her so completely, so thoroughly, that this episode shook me down to my core and ripped my life apart. Sometimes I still can't believe she did what she did. For some reason, she held on to the affair partner's contact info after D-Day. I let it slide for about a month after D-Day and finally confronted her about it. She said she just never got around to deleting it, but that she never used it or contacted him in any way since D-Day. In my presence, she deleted it that day. She also deleted him from her friends list on words with friends. Of course, he may have an alternate username, but without going completely magnum, Pi I wouldn't ever find out about it. I am somewhat to mostly trusting of her when she says she's been completely clean since D-Day. While I acknowledge that being at ground zero, I won't have the most objective perspective of what's going on, I still am fairly certain she's been faithful since D-Day. Yes, a few things here and there have stuck in my craw over the last three months, but overall, I see no hard evidence of continued infidelity. Of course, I still don't trust her completely and I am still quite hypersensitive to everything she says and does. What I mean is that my senses are still operating at full power. This is why I want to install a key logger on her phone, so I can monitor what's going on when I'm not in visual range. With enough passage of time, and her being faithful, I will be able to trust her again. Having said that, I'd like to ask a different question about the aftermath of the affair. I've been wrestling with telling the OBS about what transpired between my wife and the affair partner. My wife is adamant about NC being honored since D-Day and that she will never do this again, so I have reasonable belief that the affair is indeed over. This is also further complicated because about 10 years ago, or more, the affair partner informed my wife that his wife cheated on him while he was at sea. So, for years, my wife and I knew that he was a BS and had some measure of sympathy for him because of it. Of course, it is possible that the affair partner lied back then and his wife never did cheat on him, but I think it's quite possible he was cheated on. So, this leaves me in a quandary, do I contact the affair partner's wife and tell her about the affair between her H and my wife? Or do I simply chalk it up to two spouses who deserve each other and each other's infidelity? Do I ignore the very real possibility that she cheated on him and still tell her of an affair that is now over? Is there anything to gain by that? I don't know what to do. The lack of boundaries was what got her in trouble. She and I have spent some time discussing that issue. As far as my trust goes, I don't believe for a second that I had an odd desire to trust her. I simply did trust her. There was never a reason not to trust her. Until this. Now, that trust is shot to hell and it will take a long, long time of her being faithful again to earn it back. Update. I know there is quite a bit of experience here in dealing with these matters, so I want to open up a little bit about where I am right now. We are exactly three months post D-Day, actually, three months plus one day. In my heart, I want to believe my wife has been faithful. In my mind, I believe there is a very good chance that she's been faithful, too. Yes, there have been a few instances here and there where I've seen things that make me wonder, but they haven't been smoking gun type of things, just stuff that I don't know what to do with. I love my wife. I've always loved her. I gave my heart to her on our wedding day, even before that. But you understand, and have never strayed from her. Our marriage of 18 years hasn't always been peaky, but quite a bit of it has. It's been the last few years that's been a little rough. I started a construction business one year after we got married and still run it today. I am also involved in government and politics, first at the state level and now strictly local, and that has dominated a lot of my time. Our marriage issues stem largely due to my focus outside the home and family, leaving my wife to run the household. She said she felt alone, neglected, and like a single mother of our five children. Anyway, not sure why I posted all that, but my current dilemma is this, I love my wife. I always have. This entire thing, her affair, destroyed me. It destroyed my entire way of looking at the world, including her. I love her, but there are times when I still am in disbelief that she did this. I'll be driving, thinking about it all, and I just blurt out, why? Why Lee? How could you do this? There are times when I don't want to exist anymore. I wish I could just disappear and not be alive, almost like George Bailey and It's a Wonderful Life. I get angry at times when I'm alone, too. I don't show it to anyone other than my parents, who've ended up being the only people I can vent to. There are still times when I cry at the drop of a hat. I don't understand it. There are also times when I want to tell my wife she needs to leave, if only because it seems like all the consequences have been shouldered by me. She seems happy, and I'm thankful for that, but damn it I'm still wounded here and everybody's so happy. Shouldn't I be? Why am I feeling this way? 1. Still trying to find the best method. I'm hoping to get something in place this week. 2. I don't understand what you are asking. 
3. She has answered most questions, as in, virtually all, but not all. The thing is, I think she's minimized many of the details, too. I have a feeling that when she says, I complained about you to the affair partner, she is leaving out just how badly she made me look. I know she compared my size with his, apparently, he makes my average size tool look small by comparison, in pictures, and the only reason to do that would be to really dig the knife in me. That makes me believe her complaining is code for stuff that's way worse than what she's letting on. I want to know exactly what she did or said when she said she complained about me, but I haven't gotten any details. She also has adamantly claimed it never got physical. The longer I go, the less I am inclined to believe that. On notifying the OBS, I am trying to work that out. Trouble is, she lives 500 miles away and I have no contact info, and if I did, I'd have to try and figure out a way to do it without the affair partner getting in the way. Expose 1. Both sets of parents, although I don't believe her parents truly understand the depth of what happened. I get the feeling that they, especially her mother, are trying to rug sweep, minimize, and blame me. I've also told a handful of people in my family and inner circle of friends, four people total. 2. I have come to the conclusion that I will expose the to the OBS, but have not figured out how, yet. We have not told our children. 3. She deleted a fair partner's contact info and deleted him from WWF and Instagram. New update stemming from yesterday. We went out walking last night, as is our daily custom, and when we got back home, she asked me if it would be alright for her to contact some guy on words with friends to tell him Merry Christmas. Given that she agreed to not use the chat feature of the game and only play the game from now on. I was taken aback by her request and looked at her funny. She said he was a nice guy who lives in Ireland and that he even suggested that our 14-year-old daughter, who plays the game, too, change her username to help with online security. This was a pretty significant trigger to me and I just looked at her with disbelief and simply said, I guess so. Thanks for thinking of me. And then we went inside. We hung out with the kids for the evening and then retired to bed. I was in bed for about 5 or 10 minutes before she came into the bedroom and the entire time my heart was pounding in my chest. It was a serious adrenaline dump going on. When she came in, I couldn't even face her, so she snuggled behind me and asked if everything was okay, insert eye roll on my part. I told her it wasn't. She knew what the problem was and said she wasn't going to contact him and that she was sorry for asking. She said she realized how bad it looked as soon as she asked me, especially given that she had agreed not to message people within the game. I told her what was going on in my head all evening long, who is this guy? How does she know he's from Ireland? Why does she want to wish some strange guy on an internet game Merry Christmas? How does he even know our daughter is on the game? I thought she agreed not to chat. Why does she think he's a good guy? Why haven't I seen any chat history with him? She said all the chatting was from the summertime, not since D-Day, and that she's been good since then. I told her I was emotionally spent from hours of playing all this in my head and then rolled over and tried to go to sleep. She got up, left the room for about 20 minutes, and then came back in. Man, sometimes I wonder. We talked yesterday at length, and she said she went out on the couch and cried and prayed and that she didn't, and wouldn't, contact the guy. She seemed pretty broken up about it. Of course, I can take that a couple different ways. 1. She realized how much it hurt me by asking to contact the guy, but whatever, just in case anyone was wondering or confused. He is not the affair partner, when she already said she wouldn't chat with anyone. 2. Something's afoot and she is self-aware enough to know she's playing with fire, or at least tempted to continue playing with fire. D-Day was three months ago and I'm still trying my best to understand it all. I scoured Facebook. No dice. My W told me a few years ago that the affair partner wasn't on Facebook due to security reasons with his job at the USCG, and I can only assume his W isn't on it, either. I googled her name trying to find a home phone number. Aside from having to pay random sites for that info, there's nothing available. My in-laws are, or have been, friendly with the affair partner's family for decades. Other than getting contact info from them, my in-laws, I don't know how to proceed at this point. I'm also pretty sure the affair partner has a pretty tight lid on all forms of communication with respect to his household, according to my W, so I'm not sure what I'd do if I got the landline number and he had all calls forwarded to his cell phone. I just don't know how to proceed right now, but I am committed to telling the OBS. My kids are concerned, I am devising a plan to tell them. I am not sure how to do all this, folks. I don't want to do anything wrong and mess it all up. You must understand this, right? I just told our five children about the affair. My wife was at my side. After explaining what happened, obviously no sordid details, and why it was bad, the only thing my sobbing wife said was, don't do it, kids. It's not worth it and apologizing for not being the mother and wife she pretended to be to all of us. She has locked herself in our bedroom now, so I'm here posting about it. My in-laws, yes, they know about the affair. I've said so a few times thus far here. I even talked to my father-in-law about the concept of disclosing the affair to the OBS and he was at least mildly receptive. I must say this again, however, it is my belief that the AP is very much in control over all forms of communication into and out of his immediate family. 
At this point, I have no idea how to contact the OBS without his involvement. He is also potentially very dangerous, given what my wife has said about his capabilities. The morning of D-Day, she texted him to say I was on their trail, and he made a veiled threat directed at me. Also, unfortunately, I no longer have any evidence of the affair. About a month after D-Day, I was sick of seeing it and between my wife and I, we permanently deleted everything, but a few pictures of her that she sent him, regarding the affair. Obviously, this means I will not be able to furnish any hard evidence for the OBS and the AP can deny everything if she confronts him, if I can even get to her first. I have no idea if my in-laws have the contact info for the OBS family, her parents divided by etc. But whatever, in order to recover some evidence, I downloaded an app and scanned my wife's phone with it, hoping to retrieve the texts from D-Day to and from the AP I'm disappointed in that the only things the app seemed to do is find what's on her phone right now. Well, thanks a bunch, I have her phone and already know what's on it right now. Quick update. 1. My father-in-law appears to be giving me his blessing on contacting the OBS and may be attempting to gather contact info on my behalf. As I said earlier, there is nothing on the web about the affair partner's family. No contact information, no Facebook, nothing. It must be because of the affair partner's job with the Coast Guard. 2. My W talked to our two oldest daughters, without informing me, and clarified that she never had physical relations with the affair partner. She says she didn't want our daughters thinking their mother had slept with someone other than their father. I only found out about her discussions because our oldest daughter, 16, told me, and then I approached my wife, asking her about the conversations. I don't like the fact that she did that. I asked her a question last night. Me, if there was a way that you could prove to me that you didn't get physical with him, would you jump at the opportunity? Her, I don't know how I could do that, but yes, I would. What do you have in mind? Me, you could take a polygraph. Her, it hurts me to think that you still don't trust me in what I say, but if that's what you want me to do, I will. You know everything already, but I'll do it. Update. I finally found a phone number online that looked promising. After calling it, I spoke to the OBS father. After introducing myself, I explained the situation to him and he seemed to indicate that his daughter already knew that something had happened with someone. He wasn't clear about it, but that's the impression he gave me. Anyway, I left him my contact info and asked if he could pass it along to his daughter and hopefully, she will see fit to contact me. After some sleuthing, I found out neither the AP nor the OBS are on Facebook, so that route is out. I've googled her name in order to get a home phone number, but from what I gather, the affair partner have very little on the net due to security concerns, he's way up the food chain in the Coast Guard. At this point, the only way I can see getting contact information is through my in-laws, who are friends with the affair partner's entire family. If that's the case, I don't see any way I can contact the OBS without my wife knowing first. So, the OBS told me that her H has cheated on her at least 10 times during their 18-year marriage. He's up the food chain in the USCG, so he travels a lot, and via hookup, dating sites, he had girls all over the country. The affair partner and OBS live in VA, but he had women in other states. The state of MS even sent him a letter requiring him to submit to a paternity test because his hookup got pregnant and was applying for welfare. The state wanted to know who the father of the child was. The OBS told me my wife was on the AP's radar even before they got married. Both my wife and I and the AP and OBS got married the same month in 1998. According to the OBS, the AP told her years ago that my wife called the AP before the weddings and begged him not to get married to the OBS because she, my wife, was in love with him. I'm not sure how true that could be because my wife and I had a great courtship followed by years of honeymooning. Perhaps the affair partner simply lied about it. I asked my wife about it and she denied it for the reasons I already stated. That part is quite bizarre. It must have been a lie told by the affair partner. The OBS didn't know that her H and my wife actually had an affair. It was news to her. She was calm the entire time, except for a few times while relating her marital history to me, and simply said while she didn't know about this one, she wasn't surprised given her H's many offenses over the years. She said she knew something was going on with her H over the last year, but couldn't find out because he was getting pretty good at covering his tracks. She said this was the final straw and now she's going to divorce him. From what she said, she has an extensive collection of evidence from his adulterous history. When I told her that my wife visited him in July while on a trip to see family, she said, well, if he was alone with her, he didn't leave until he slept with her. She said her H is an addict and compulsive liar about everything, but he is very persuasive and got women all over to give him what he wanted. All in all, we talked for about an hour. I was hoping to find out more information about the affair from her, but as I said, she didn't know anything specific about this one with my wife. I wonder what my wife truly thinks about the affair partner, the affair, and what she did throughout the course of the affair now that she is aware that she was just one of many women this guy was chasing on the side. Interestingly, when I mentioned to her a couple days ago that it appears as though the cheater was cheating on the cheater, she made remarks about them, the affair partner and his wife. No, I said, I'm talking about him and you. The polygraph goes, I spoke to our police chief about it, 
I run our town's largest emergency services district and found out how expensive they are, $750. Ouch, I still want to follow through with it, but it will take a little bit to scrape the extra money for one. Quick update, a few days ago, my wife was visibly upset and said how she broke down and checked my phone because she wanted to see what the OBS and I were saying, texting. In the text, the OBS mentioned a phone number from our state that the affair partner routinely calls and asked if it was my wife's number. It wasn't, and I texted back that I was reasonably sure my wife has maintained NC since D-Day. I did, however, openly wonder via texting if it could be a burner phone. My wife mentioned that comment in saying she was hurt that I said such a thing and that I could search the entire house and not find one, burner phone, because there isn't one. She also brought up being hurt about possibly having to take a polygraph. She was crying during all this and went out for a walk. When she got back, she seemed to be in better spirits and told me she understood why I say and do the things I do, and that she brought it all on herself. She said she's with me for life and reiterated that she'll never hurt you like that again. I don't believe there is or has been a burner phone. I googled the number and it belonged to a business 50 miles away. Besides, it was no mystery to my wife that I was talking to the OBS. I shared with my wife everything the OBS told me, including how the affair partner had cheated on his wife for the entirety of their marriage, and how he had women all over the country during his travels with the USCG. I even told my wife that she wasn't the only girl he had stashed on the side here in New England and that his plan to meet my wife in Boston last fall included him seeing this other girl, too. Again, I didn't mind her seeing the few texts between me and the OBS. If anything, it showed her precisely what I think of her and her actions in an unvarnished way. Folks, I didn't complain about my wife to the OBS, either on the phone or via text, so don't think that I attacked her. I simply handled business or answered questions with the OBS. For instance, here are my texts with the OBS in their entirety. I've been busy talking to her, my wife, for the last hour. Her number is this. She says they haven't contacted each other at all since September 11th. I guess I believe her, but I wonder if that could be a burner phone. Have you called that number? I wonder if I should. I googled it, the number. I sent a screenshot of the results. OBS, if you are willing, my wife, would like to talk to you. Please let me know. Thank you. Believe me, OBS, I understand what you are saying. This entire thing has shaken me to my core. I spent two months just trying to exist. If you ever find out more about what happened between them, please tell me. I think, my wife, has told me everything. But after an entire year of lies and deceit, I don't know what's true anymore. She appears to be remorseful, but sometimes I question whether I really know, knew her. Sometimes I question everything. My comment, holding off on the poly is just going to keep the affair fresh in your mind. So while I understand the financial constraints but I would brainstorm and then brainstorm some more to figure out how to get it done sooner rather than later.